Today I'm working on a 2011 Chevrolet Avio and basically I'm going to show you how to remove the factory fitted radio without any damage to the fascia or anything like that and also quickly show you the wiring interface that you're going to need to make this radio work, an aftermarket radio work with this car. First things first, tools you're going to require to do the job most importantly are a plastic leverage tool, you need one of these. Now, basically don't use a screwdriver, a flat blade screwdriver, because you are going to damage the plastic trim around the edges and it's going to look a right mess. So what we're going to do, first of all, is pop the plastic leverage tool in probably the top corner here and pop. As you can see, that just popped out nice and easily. It's on little pop brackets, you can see. There you go, little spring clips. And we're going to work our way with the plastic leverage tool all the way around until this shape pops off completely. I will just briefly warn you, these bottom clips that you can see here are very, very tight. So you're going to have quite a bit of force on your plastic leverage tool to actually sort of pop them out and bring them forwards. They do feel like they're going to snap. They are very, very well in. So just be aware of that one, guys. With the plastic trim finally popped off, it exposes four Phillips crosshead screws. One, two, three, four. We're going to remove all four of those right now. Once you've, removed, if you're, if, once you've removed the four screws out of the radio, basically put your hand underneath and give it a sharp pull. It'll sort of come out and drop down. At this point, it's a very good time to press eject because if you've left a disc in it, now is the time to get that disc out. So guys, just quickly press eject. Then after that, I recommend you cover the gear knob with something just in case, you know, you don't want to scratch it or anything because the back of this thing is steel. Yeah, and it can make quite a mess of the trim. So cover up all your trim and everything. There's your plugs. So we've got to squeeze the tabs down on these two plugs to remove them. And also you've got an aerial there that you pull straight out. Okay, with the radio removed, I'll just let me show you these tabs quickly. So some of these cars have got these blue locking tabs on, okay, which are basically shoved in like this, stopping you pressing the tab down. You want to pop them out so it looks like that one. And then you can press the spring clip down to pull them them out there's your aerial, aerial cable for this particular car you are going to need an adapter for that speaking of adapters let's have a look at your wiring harness adapter that you're going to need for this car so here it is this is made by connects 2 you can order these from ebay amazon that type of place most car shops ct20 cv01 and that should plug straight into this okay there's your wiring harness adapter plugged in and this is the plastic fascia surround for this particular car. Now, these do vary a little bit. You are going to have to look up this one on Amazon or eBay, etc. As I say, or ask your local car specialist which one you need. And basically, they slot in on little locating lugs. You put your screws back in. And if you're fitting a single DIN unit, you've got a little pocket that you can put in. And that makes the hole the right size for your aftermarket radio. These then plug into the wiring harness adapter that comes with your radio. So in the end, once you put your plastic trim around, it looks like this. Quick update before we put the radio in. We've now got the actual radio's wiring harness plugged in. I'll be loom taping most of this up so it's nice and neat. We have the aerial actually adapted. I didn't have the correct adapter with me, so yes, I've had to fabricate one, which means chopping the end off a normal aerial wire and splicing it into the original car's wiring. It's not ideal, but when you're out and you haven't got the correct parts with you, you know, you have to improvise sometimes. That'll be a perfectly good signal, no problem there. But it is soldered and spliced into the original cable. Like I say, it's the end chopped off an old aerial. Frame's all nicely screwed in. We're now going to pop the radio in, pop the pocket in, put the trim on and see what it looks like. Frame in, all tucked in nicely, everything plugged in so you can now slide your new radio in and of course do the obligatory. Remove the cellophane there. Uh, what we're going to do now is quickly test it to make sure it works before we click it in and then obviously finish with the surround. Everything working as expected, memory for the radio stations and everything works as it should do. Not quite going to lock this in yet guys, I've got some more work to do on the vehicle so it's got to come back out again to be honest. But I thought I'd just pop it all together to show you roughly how it's going to look. Obviously all this needs clicking in and that just shoving in. But that is how you remove the radio from one of these vehicles and how to put a single DIN unit back in. Thanks a lot for watching and bye for now.